Hello and welcome back to some more BitBurners. So in the last video I showed you guys how to create a script called DevTools that allows you to access the dev menu uh, so that you don't have to worry about grinding XP, money or waiting for too long to do the stuff that you want to do. Um, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to um, I guess automate some of the stuff for corporations as well as using uh, how to use the corporation API uh, for your game. Um, I also want to walk you guys through the entire process that I usually follow um, from planning to actually creating the uh, actual script just so that you guys can uh, produce some of your own stuff as well. Uh, so before we get into it, uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, explain the market TA upgrade. Um, I did mention it two videos ago and I want to show you guys the, uh, I guess, the effect of that market TA upgrade. Uh, and market TA can be purchased through this research tab. If you click on this drop down, you can then unlock these two upgrades. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything else. Um, market TA is basically the only upgrade you need. Uh, but basically what it does is that it automatically adjusts the pricing of your products uh, based on its demand um, and it sort of takes away the guesswork uh, from you know the, the manually changing the pricing here uh, which is pretty good. So corporations is a, a very tricky one mainly because you can't fully automate everything. Uh, if you do fully automate everything you're gonna end up becoming bankrupt very very quickly. Uh, and spending all your money because you can't really control what happens. Um, so the first thing I do whenever I try to assess where I can apply automation is I first assess the manual workflow uh, that I follow whenever I play around with this UI. Uh, so let's jump into Miro just to go over that um, the planning phase. Um, so whenever we create a new division, the first thing we obviously do is we purchase a new uh, division. So I'm gonna symbolize that with the box. So every single step is uh, represented with a box. Uh, and then I'm gonna, just gonna write purchase new division. Uh, you can't see that because the text is currently white. There you go. So the first thing we do is purchase a new division. Uh, and then after purchasing a new division, we then assess whether or not we can uh, do anything to uh, increase the profitability of this sector. So uh, I'm gonna put that in, symbolize it as a, a diamond for decision. And I'm gonna say, uh, can we upgrade any sector? Um, and then like that. And obviously upgrading sector, we have to um, set, set up some criteria for that. Uh, if we do wanna fully automate it. So I'm gonna put a note here um, that says we have to specify criteria so like exact for example what, what are we exactly looking for whenever we want to upgrade a sector uh, just to keep it uh, at a high level uh, whenever we can upgrade a new sector uh, we usually tend to that sector so we do a whole bunch of stuff uh, to tend to the sector and upgrade it uh, and, then, and then I'm going to change this to a different color, just to symbolize that it's a compilation of, of more than one step. After uh, asking ourselves, can we upgrade the sector? We then ask ourselves, um, do we have all sectors like so? Uh, if we don't, then we purchase a new sector. So if you imagine um, we only have sector 12 and then we then, then there's the expand to sector menu. Uh, that's the next step we do if we um, did everything we could for this sector. Alright, so after asking ourselves, do we have all the sector? I, the next thing I usually do um, whenever I purchase all the sectors and then I tended all the sectors, um, I then ask myself, um, can I purchase any of these upgrades? So can I upgrade Wilson Analytics or Smart Factories and all that stuff? Um, and I usually base it off um, how much profits I make. Um, and uh, based off the, the pricing for this purchase. Um, so I'm going to put that into the mirror as well. Please note that this, this flow diagram really depends on your playstyle. So my flow diagram might be different to yours. Uh, so, but the, the steps is basically just to, um, you know, model what you do manually 
and then put it on some sort of diagramming tool like Miro or Draw.io. Um, so if we can, so for this one, um, I guess for the next step, can we upgrade the corporation? Um, if we can't upgrade it, then we try purchase uh, upgrades, new upgrades, like that. And then after that, I then ask myself, can I expand to a new new division? Um, and then if I can, then obviously I purchase a new division. Uh, otherwise, I just wait, I sleep. Um, so I'm going to end this flow. Uh, and um, if you're using UML, the end state is symbolized by a, a circle that isn't filled. So I'm gonna just use that notation as well here, and then um, and then also the start starting point is symbolized by a solid black circle like that, just so that we follow the UML convention. So I want to break down this 10 sector step here mainly because it comprises of multiple steps as well. So whenever I I tend to a sector, the first thing I usually do is I look at whether or not I can upgrade the warehouse size. Obviously, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, because we have the market TA upgrade, but in the early game, I usually ask myself, can I upgrade this warehouse right now? So I'm going to put that in as well. Um, I'm going to keep it at a high level. I'm not going to do this decision uh, nodes here. Um, so, so I'm just going to say purchase warehouse space if we can. All right. So after purchasing the warehouse to um, the amount that I wanted, um, then the next thing I do is I hire the employees and then allocate them to the jobs that they need to be uh, need to be in. So I'm going to put that in as well. So hire employees and allocate them if needed like that. And then the next one I do is um, I then uh, after hiring all the employees, I then assess whether or not I can develop the new products or upgrade uh, some of the products that we have. So for example, this prod two isn't producing as much as everything else, mainly because it's been there for a long time. So I'm gonna discontinue this and then uh, purchase a new uh, product or develop a new product. So I'm gonna put that in as develop or upgrade product if we can. Um, and then lastly, the next thing I do after developing the product is I then ask myself, um, can I allocate the sale price? Obviously, it doesn't matter anymore with market TA2. Uh, but for this one, in the early stages, you obviously have to set this to market price and whatnot. And then you have to automatically adjust it. Um, so, so I'm going to put that step in. Um, allocate and adjust pricing for each product and then connect that there and then I think that's the end of the flow and then um, and I just repeat the whole process again can I purchase a new uh, a new warehouse can I hire more employees can I develop or upgrade products and then I uh, can I allocate the pricing or adjust the pricing based on the demand um, and then yeah so I'm gonna put this uh, end uh, node here uh, just symbolize that this is the end of that flow so we have the the tend sector here um, and then we have the overarching um, division management flow so looking at this uh, after assessing the manual process I then try to identify whereabouts the pain points are um, and I usually do that by tagging it with, uh, with uh, some some sort of indicator or some sort of label. Uh, the the easiest way I found when in Miro when tagging where the pain points are is I just create a rectangle with the word pain on it. I make sure that this is a white text. And then I then try to place it below any of the steps that I find kind of tedious or kind of painful. So for example, the hire employees and allocate them. Uh, if we go to Bitburner, uh, the steps for that is I upgrade the size to whatever I want. I then have to repeatedly click on whereabouts these things are. And also I have to manually um, calculate the allocations of my the total employees. And this can be a very time consuming and very, very tedious. Um, so I'm going to put that in as a, a pain point. 
And then the next thing, next pain point that I can identify is developing or upgrading products. Um, I don't really want to monitor the uh, the products on any of these sectors. Um, so I, I don't really want to, you know, analyze everything. Are they selling well and then discontinue or readjust the pricing? So that's also a pain point. And then also the next pain point that I could see in the early stages was um, can I adjust the pricing uh, because it was a pain going through every single sector and then finding which one's the best pricing here. Um, and then after identifying where the pain points are or where the tedious uh, steps are, I then ask myself, is it feasible? Can I uh, actually implement it? Uh, via the script or is there out-of-the-box solutions that can alleviate this uh, uh, this pain point uh, so again just like how we did the pain point um, I'm gonna change this to a different color and then I'm gonna name it feasible so for for these three pain points I then ask myself is there um, you know any script functions that uh, the bitburner supports that can allow me to automate any of these um, and then this is usually where I do a whole bunch of research on the functions that's provided to me, uh, how I can uh, actually construct all of them together, and then I then put them into uh, a script. So I already did my research on this, and I figured out that this one's feasible. Um, and then this one, uh, developing a, and upgrading the products is also feasible, so I'm going to put that in. Um, allocating the pricing for each product, uh, they don't really have a um, any any indication on the um, you know the the pr products <laughs> product information. Uh, so I don't think I can. Um, it's, but it can be uh, I guess um, outsourced to the market TA upgrade. Um, but it would be a, a cool challenge to see if anyone can actually uh, automate the allocation, pricing allocation on their scripts as well, because it is a pain point to go through every single sector and then adjust the product pricing. Uh, but anyway, so now that we identified everything here, um, all the pain points that we have, then that's when we start creating the script. Uh, so from looking at these diagrams, we have to create a script for automatically hiring the employees so I'm gonna put that as a green and then also developing and upgrading the products if we can um, so it's uh, the process will be semi automated uh, mainly because the reason why you don't want to fully automate the corporation is because if you do fully automate it you have to be careful as to how you spend the money and uh, it's much easier to control where your spending is if you have executable scripts here that semi-automates some of the manual work that you have to do to achieve the stuff that you want to achieve. Uh, but anyway, now that we have identified um, where the pain points are, um, I guess it's time to automate uh, some of the script. Um, and I'm going to be doing that in the next video just to avoid making this uh, video way too long. Alright, so let's first jump into the YouTube comments. Alright, so it looks like we have a few new comments here. Um, starting from Enfys Green, um, he's, he says, uh, Please stop making your script run from bottom to top. Um, if runs last code first, the way you wrote it had to change the whole code. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that my coding style is uh, is bothering you. Um, the reason why I write things bottom to top is because of the process that I follow whenever I create scripts like this. Um, I know that every single developer has their own coding style, so some people like to encapsulate all their uh, main logic in the main function and then extract all the helper functions outside it. Uh, some people like me write everything, uh, all the helper functions I need uh, at the top first and then write the main logic at the bottom. And then some people like to use hoisting so they uh, write the script from bottom to top and then move all the main logic at the top so that it uh, all the functions that it uses is hoisted up whenever it's executed. Uh, it really depends on you uh, but again my scripts are used for reference so uh, if you're copying and pasting directly and then it's the code style is bothering you uh, feel free to write your own code um, feel free to use my code as reference and then uh, write it the way that you want to because again everyone has their own style of coding 
and there's really no right or wrong way of doing things um so next one is from Avrath and he says I have a suggestion because it's really been bugging me for quite some time I looked over uh, Reddit and Steam forums and everywhere I've seen mention ROI however I don't think ROI is actually a useful metric to go by in this instance this is because the basic ROI calculation doesn't take time into consideration and time is an important variable when it comes to calculating if an investment is worthwhile uh, in this case, it might be better to calculate how long an upgrade will take to pay itself off over a set period entered by the user. Uh, that would allow the script to be far more useful, I think, and it would address one of the biggest issues I often see with these scripts. Um, doesn't matter what the ROI is for a hack node, if it, it'll take a month to pay itself off. Um, yes, that is true. Um, time is definitely something that you need to consider whenever you're making investments in the real world. Uh, but the reason why ROI is based off uh, just the profit amount or the effect of uh, doing an action is because first, it's supported by the, the uh, BitBurner docs. Um, I haven't seen any functions that projects um, how long it'll take to pay itself off. So it's technically feasible. And the second is because realistically you wouldn't be running BitBurner 24/7. Uh, you would close the game, and then um, you, when you start it up again, it would rerun every single script uh, again. So that's why that's the reason why we base ROI based off the profit increase um, of an action um, rather than the time calculation, if that makes sense. Um, next one is from SauceBoss and he says, thank you very much for this video. Just got Bitburn. This was very helpful. Uh, no problem. Uh, and thank you for that uh, support. Um, next one is um, from XD Guru, and he says, I can't find the definition of get thresholds in your video. Um, yeah, so get thresholds, uh, The my, my scripts evolve over time. Um, so if you see something in my not mentioned in my video and then suddenly you compare it in the script um, It's it's the reason is because of bug fixes that come come over time as well um, so Make sure that you look at the stable script um, And then there's also episode folders um, to contain the snapshot of uh, All the scripts at the time I created it all right, so next one is from Dragon Army, and he says, well, I fixed a problem I got, but I don't know how. Yeah, <laughs> so welcome to um, programming where you just don't know why things work when you rerun things. Um, next one is from Brandon Keith, and he says, when trying to utilize launch fleets, I'm running into a runtime error. Um, I, I feel like the, the reason why uh, launch fleets is acting this way is because maybe your imports is messed up um, So make sure that your find target script is in your home folder as well and you can find it in your home folder um, And the, this one usually gets thrown whenever your import is incorrect and last one is from outcast army And he says how many bit nodes have you destroyed? I'm a newbie and I hardly know what I'm doing and I'm still on third bit node also, thanks for putting your code on GitHub. This made learning JS easier, uh, knowing I have some reference to see how certain things are implemented. And no problem. Um, so I've only destroyed one bit node so far. I'm really taking my time with this third bit node just to understand everything I can. Um, and usually, a uh, bit burner for me is just some pastime to solve some problems, and then after that, I do <laughs> my own things. Um, so yeah, so I'm progressing through this game very, very slowly. Um, so yeah, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So that, I think that's all the YouTube comments. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a script that can automatically hire employees for your corporation. So I'll see you guys in the next one.